we're trying to figure out what kinds of chemicals are important to look at in breast cancer studies or what kinds of chemicals might cause breast cancer um, based on any evidence we can find. First we did a big survey of the literature and we identified 216 chemicals that cause mammary gland tumors in animal studies. These include chemicals that are in air pollution, some chemicals uh, have been used in foods like dyes and industrial chemicals, common organic solvents. So these 216 we've been working with in a variety of ways now uh, to say how are people exposed and uh, what more do we need to learn about them and how can we limit exposures. For each of the 216 chemicals that we identified that cause mammary gland tumors in animals, uh, we collected information and put it together in a database that's freely available on our website that, uh, where you can look up each chemical, you can figure out uh, its regulatory status, which, uh, what programs it might be regulated under or, or not, um, how it's used, consumer product uses, <clears throat> how people might be exposed, um, and we have information in there on if it's been classified or rated by IARC or EPA or any other major government government type body about um, its carcinogenicity. This is really uh, very important because what we know about the mammary gland now is that uh, it it's developing from in utero times uh, all the way through uh, the first pregnancy when uh, when the cells sort of differentiate or develop into their final condition where they can make milk. And so the mammary gland is sort of in an undeveloped state for a longer time than any other organ in the body. <laughs> and, uh, and it's actually these less developed cells that are more vulnerable to chemical carcinogens. Uh, hormone exposure in early in life and in utero can alter the pace of development of the mammary gland and change the uh, susceptibility of the tissue to a carcinogenic insult later in life. We're saying, well, we know these chemicals cause mammary tumors or they alter mammary gland development. We need to understand human exposure better in order to figure out how to reduce exposure. So we're developing biomonitoring methods and trying to implement them in various studies so we can figure out where exposure comes from and how to reduce it. Second, uh, there are thousands of chemicals that haven't been tested, so we want to learn what we can from the chemicals that have been tested and, uh, and see whether we can sort of predict which of these chemicals that hasn't been tested is more likely to be a problem. There are a lot of unanswered questions. I think what's most urgent is that we start looking carefully at chemicals before they go into widespread use. Because we've seen example after example after example where uh, we have paid a huge cost in human health and lives, uh, and uh, and in, and then we're not able to clean things up after you know once they're out there. And so lead poisoning, lead in paint, asbestos, PCBs. <clears throat> these are mercury. These are um, uh, these are problems that we know we could have prevented if we, uh, if we looked more carefully up front. Each chemical is, has its own story, and it's actually hard to generalize. <laughs> but I will talk about perfluorinated compounds. Perfluorinated compounds are a complex mixture, but the most common have been used to make Teflon, to make waterproof coatings, to make textile coatings like Scotchgard and stain-proof coatings. This is all due to the marvelous chemistry of perfluorinated compounds and uh, there is um, good evidence that, that, that they're, tox they're toxic in a variety of ways. They do affect thyroid hormones, they affect mammary gland development, and there's some uh, sign of mammary gland tumors in animal studies. So that's, um, that's an example of one family of chemicals that we're uh, trying to focus on in our exposure studies, trying to understand more about what chemicals are out there and how people are exposed so we can reduce exposure. So those kinds of studies help, help you know, regulators and the public understand what are the primary sources of exposure, where is the exposure coming from, and uh, once we know that, we can, you know, sure we can study it more, but we can also choose to reduce exposure now.
Massachusetts Breast Cancer Coalition is an organization dedicated to preventing environmental causes of breast cancer through community education, research advocacy, and changes to public policy. For more information, please visit nbcc.org or silentspring.org. Thank you.